Hello everybody, welcome back to Firefield Junction and today we've got another uh, DCC fitting video for you. Uh, today's one though, uh, we've actually got, um, as we can see, we've got a steam loco for us today. Uh, yeah, when moving, we haven't got a diesel today for once, we've got, we've finally got a kettle today. Uh, and as we can see, today's loco that we've got, it is a Duchess of Sutherland. Um, you may know, um, if you haven't seen the video, I recently uh, reviewed um, the train pack that this loco comes in. Um, which is one of the Royal Train train packs. So obviously, we've got some Royal Train coaches along with the Loco. However, one thing with this particular model is that it is not DCC ready. Despite it not being incredibly old, um, even though it's probably around 15 years old or so, um, this particular Loco um, is not DCC ready, so it's going to need um, hard wiring, and we can't just uh, do the usual plug in, uh, plug in the chip and off we go sort of thing, unfortunately, with this one. Uh, however, doing this particular Loco, um, it's not the hardest in the world, it's certainly not the easiest to do I'd say, uh, but it's certainly um, easier than other locos out there. Um, now with this, with this particular one we don't actually need the tender for this uh, because everything is going to be inside the loco. So the first thing we can actually do is just get rid of the tender because we're not going to need that until the end. All we need uh, for this conversion is the loco itself. Um, now one thing with this particular loco is that it, it does use um, the same or very similar tooling as a few other locos out there, uh, one of them being, if I just grab it, uh, this one here. Now this is a Princess Royal class loco, this is Princess Elizabeth. And for those of you that have the Hornby Royal Train train set, um, like I do, because obviously this is the loco that comes in it. Um, for those of you that know or don't know, this loco, well these two locos, they do use uh, very similar toolings. And um, whilst the bodies are obviously very different, uh, obviously very different, and I'm pretty sure that, and the way that the bodies are actually held on is ever slightly different as well. The chassis themselves, I'm pretty certain, are very, very similar. The motors, I'm pretty sure, that are the same. The gear train is all the same. And the general way the, the locos are wired up um, are very, very similar as well. Um, this particular loco already has a decoder in it, so this one's already been hardwired. Um, obviously, we're going to be doing this one today. Um, obviously, because these locos have tender pickups as well, um, you obviously don't. You obviously need to worry about um, the the electrical connection. Um, so there's obviously two wires coming from um, the uh, connection here. So you obviously need to make sure that you wire those up as well, and that you wire them up the right way round. Um, which will be obviously it can be a little bit difficult sometimes. But as long as you trace everything back through, um, you should be fine. Now if we just put this loco back to one side, so obviously we don't need this one. We can find it focus on the loco at hand. And now one thing with this particular loco, um, which I suppose is one of the small differences between this and the Princess Royal class, is the way that the, is that the body is held on. On the Princess Royal class locos, if I scrub it again actually, the way the bodies on these are held on is by a single screw uh, just there underneath the front bogey. However, on this particular loco, the body screw is actually at the back of the loco, just under the training bogey here. If I can just move it out the way. Hopefully, um, I'm not sure how easy you'll be able to see, but there is a, a large uh, screw just there. Um, it's large, but it's not incredibly long, and that screws uh, the and secures the body shell um, to the chassis to, obviously, to ensure that it doesn't fall off. And then just at the front, um, it, you probably won't be able to see this, but just underneath the smoke box, there are two small lugs um, just poking through just underneath the smoke box door. So when you undo this body screw, um, you then have to lever up the cab and then you slide the body forward slightly and that is how it should come off. So if we just do that now, so if we grab a flathead screwdriver and if we take out the screw, there we are just like that, Ooh, there we go. So we've got the screw there, it's not a very big one so make sure you don't want to lose it. If we just put that to one side. All we then need to do is very, very carefully to ensure that we don't damage anything. As you can see, the body shell is now loose, so if we just lift that up, then we just gently push it forward. There we go. And the body shell comes off nice and easily like that. And we can now put that to one side. So now we can see what she's like inside at the moment. So we can see we've got the motor here. I'm pretty sure it is a five pole motor. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, either way, it's a very good motor, um, but it does give very good performance. And we can see we've got all of the wires uh, from the pickups uh, coming from the loco. So we can see here we've got two wires here, uh, just on the top there, four pickups for the loco. So we've got one here, obviously, for one rail, then one here from the other rail. Then we've also got, just at the back here, 
Um, I don't know how well you'll be able to see them, as they are the same colour. But these are the two wires um, for the tender pickups. Now, I'm pretty sure actually that they are all soldered uh, together. They are all meet at this um, capacitor. So you should actually be able to quite easily work out um, which uh, wire needs to go where. Um, so obviously they are already soldered uh, to the correct side. So obviously two of them will be soldered to one side of this capacitor and two of them will be soldered to the other side. So as long as you make sure that you know which one is which and you don't get them mixed up when you come to wiring the autocoder or sockets or whatever, um, you shouldn't, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, you shouldn't uh, get them mixed up. Now, obviously, first thing we need to do, um, first things first, we'll just take off this little bit of tape there, which is holding the wires on. I think that bit of tape's actually gone, actually, but we'll keep it anyway for the moment. Just try and open up all of this. So we'll just grab the capacitor, we'll just try and unwrap all of the wires so that everything's a bit easier to see. There we are, the motor's a little bit sticky from the tape. Just wipe the hands over. <laughs> there we go. So hopefully you can see a bit better now um, where all of the wires are going to. If I hold it like maybe like that for you, I'm not too... I'm trying to get this at the right angle so you can see it. But hopefully you can see there where we've got the black wire and then one of the wires from the tender coming to one side of the capacitor. And then we've also got and the red wire from the loco pickups will go into the other side of the capacitor along with the other wire from the tender pickups. So when we come in to wire the 8-pin socket, because we are going to be wiring, uh, we're going to do the usual 8-pin um, socket and then just plug the decoder in um, to method today. We then should be able to make sure that we, when we come to wire that up, we should uh, quite easily uh, know which of these two tender pickup wires uh, goes where. So obviously if you do get them the wrong way around, obviously the loco will run, run fine without the tender, as soon as you couple up the tender, um, you'll get a short circuit and then you'll know that something's wrong. Well, obviously, the next thing we need to do first is we shall desolder all of these wires uh, from the capacitor so that they're all nice and loose. So if we just have the soldering iron and we just try and desolder everything. It might be a bit difficult because it's all been insulated, but we should be able to do this fairly easily. There we are, that's one wire. So we'll actually we'll put that wire over, wire over that side. And if we also do the wire, the tender pickup wire that goes with that black wire. It might be a little bit difficult. It might be easier to cut this off actually. <laughs> yeah, so if we just grab some little scissors, if I just grab the multi-tool, we grab some scissors, and if we gently try and cut the wire, or we'll try to leave some excess of the wire. There we go. So that's wire. We can bend down that side so we know that, that goes with that uh, pickup from the loco. And then we've got the other two wires. If we try and cut off some of this insulation. There we are. Should be able to cut the whole lot off actually. A little bit more, nearly there. There we are. Then we should be able to take off this piece of tubing. There we go. We can get rid of that, and that's now exposed. Uh, the other two wires and where they're connected. So now we can desolder those. There we are. They've actually stayed attached together. And also while we're here, we can get rid of the capacitor because we're not going to need that. There we are, that's from that side. And then if we just tip the loco over so that we can get to the other side of the motor. Oop. There we go, and that's the capacitor off. So well, we're not going to need that because the decoder will replace the function of the uh, capacitor. And there we are. We've now got our, all of our wires, all nice and free. And now we can wire up uh, the 8-pin socket. So if we just grab 
the sockets that I'm going to use. So I am going to use one of the pretty wide sockets. Now, usually what I would do with these is I would just wrap all of the wires that I don't need out of the way. But I'll probably, what I'll probably do with this one is I'll probably just cut them off and just get them out of the way um, because there is fairly limited limited space inside of the loco. Um, there's still plenty inside for the sockets and the decoder, but we want to ensure, want to ensure that we have as much space as possible uh, to put things and we don't want to be squashing anything. Uh, so the wires that we don't need, uh, which are going to be the green, the blue, the yellow and the white, because they're all for functions and I'm very, very unlikely uh, to wire up any lights or anything to this loco. So we'll get rid of them, I'll just cut those off, but obviously we'll keep the ones that we need uh, for the movement and then we'll come back in a moment and then we can carry on. Okay, so there we are. So we've got rid of all the wires that we don't need, which has left us with the black, the red, the orange and the gray. And those are all of the colors that we need uh, for movement. We don't need anything else. And obviously to wire them up, all we need to do is the red wire from the socket will go to this red pickup wire here. And obviously the uh, tender pickup wire that's connected to the black wire from the socket will go to this pickup wire from the loco. And this other wire just down here, if I spin the loco around for you, uh, the other wire that's uh, just here, you might be able to see it. So we need to solder the black wire to those two wires. Then the grey uh, will solder to the bottom of the motor down there. And then the contacts on the top of the motor, we will solder the orange wire to. So hopefully that will make sense. Um, so I'll, I'll go away and do it with that all now. And then once it's all done, we can come back and then you can hopefully see uh, what I've done, get a better idea of it. Then we can carry on from there. So I'll get all of that done and I'll see you in a second. Okay, here we are finally. Uh, that did take it longer than I was expecting it to, uh, but we're finally here. Everything's been wired in. I've also gone and put the decoder in as well. Um, so I wanted to try and ensure, uh, just, <laughs> just to try and ensure that everything was in the place um, where it wasn't going to stop the body going back on. And I'm pretty sure where everything is now, um, it should be fine and the body should go back on fine. Um, I originally, um, as you saw there, did um, it took a couple of attempts to uh, get the chip and the socket and everything in place. Um, to ensure that it was out of the way of the body. Um, but after that, it does look like everything is uh, going to be fine now. Um, it is still a little bit of a squeeze. Um, the body does seem does seem like it is going to be squashing something um, at some point. Um, but then again, there isn't always as much steam, uh, as much room inside steam locos uh, compared to diesels, which is obviously what I'm used to doing. Um, but anyway, this is the second, uh, what I classify the second uh, large uh, steam loco that I've done. Um, so I'm not too bad, not too bad. Uh, but anyway, as we can see, everything's uh, been wired in. Uh, the chip um, has been secured in. Um, it's an 8-pin Trainomatic decoder uh, that's gone in this loco. So I wanted to go for something um, that was uh, pretty decent, uh, will give some good performance. And at least I won't have to worry about going back in and changing the decoder um, and spending lots more time faffing around, trying to get everything in place again where it's not going to be in the, way, in the way of the body. Um, but quickly, before we test it and put the body back on, um, I will just go through everything again. So if we just look at the back here, uh, we can see uh, the two insulated connections where all of the pickup wires have been soldered together. Uh, so we've got the two wires that come from the electrical connection to the tender. They've been soldered with their relevant uh, pickup wires from the uh, loco and also the wire relevant wire from the socket. They've all been wired together. Um, this one was quite easy to do because these two wires, uh, the pickup wire and the wire from the loco, uh, were all ready together so it was quite easy to do that one um, this one was a bit more of a pain because soldering three wires together uh, can be quite annoying sometimes but I luckily managed to do it eventually and obviously the connections to the loco uh, to the motor they were really easy to do uh, nice and easy to solder on and that's it so that's all we needed to do so now what we can do is we can head over to the layout uh, we'll put the loco on uh, we'll put the tender with it as well to ensure that uh, there's maximum reliability and we'll give it a test and see if she works Okay, so here we are. So as you can see, the Loco's back on the track. Uh, she's got her tender with her again. Uh, the decoder's all been programmed uh, because it originally was in um, a Lima model and I had to adjust quite a lot of CVs uh, to get the decoder to run well with that Loco. 
but putting it in this one, it starts to run a little bit iffy. So I've, I've I reset it and I've programmed uh, some of the relevant CVs, including the address, the acceleration, deacceleration, uh, back EMF, all the general stuff. And she does seem to be running quite well. Um, she does seem to have a little bit of a tight spot uh, when the coupling rods get round, uh, right round to the back here. You d she does uh, seem to jam up slightly and uh, get quite noisy. I'm not sure why she's doing that. Um, I'm not sure if it's where I've been doing the work on her. I don't know if I've accidentally bent something. I don't know if one of the coupling rods has actually accidentally been bent. Um, but I have gone over everything. Everything looks straight. Um, but I have checked once, the, once I have stopped her, once the wheels are in the position where the coupling rods, um, at least on this side, are right around the back, uh, the back of the wheel here. And I have uh, taken her off and just given a fiddle with the centre axle. And it, it does seem quite stiff. So I'm not sure if maybe it's if the uh, valve gear on the centre wheel is jamming up slightly at that point, or if maybe the gear, the gearing inside is jamming up at that point. I'm not too sure. Again, it could also be just where she's still quite new because she has only had um, very little. She hasn't had much running at the moment. She's only had probably around an hour or so running in total. So that's not an awful lot of running for her. So she could just need more running, um, just to help loosen her up a bit. Um, it doesn't seem to be too major, but the uh, slowing down um, is quite noticeable if I get her to run for you. You can see there when she gets to that point, she does uh, jam up slightly. Um, I'm not again. I'm not sure why she's doing. It. I'm not sure why she's doing it. It doesn't seem too major. It does seem to be a bit more noticeable forward though. And once she's up to some speed, it does uh, pretty much go away. As you can see now, once she's got a bit of speed, um, she do is pretty much fine. Maybe still a tiny bit of jamming up for that speed, but it, she is uh, pretty much fine now. There is, does seem to be a slight knocking noise though. I'm not too, what, not too sure why she's doing that, uh, but she was doing that um, originally as well. But again, she could just need some more running, but at least now she's DTC. She's running very well. And hopefully she'll provide many, many years of useful service. Yeah, overall, very, very good. Hopefully you found uh, the conversion useful <laughs> for some of your locos. Uh, there are a few um, Hornby locos out there that do use this tooling or very similar tooling. So hopefully you'll be able to use it and get a loco uh, as beautiful as this uh, running on DCC. But thanks for watching anyone, everyone. <laughs> And I'll see you in the next video.